السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وأرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه وحصرنا في زمرة عبادك الصالحين أمين رب العالمين Welcome back. This is our third night of Ramadan. We ask Allah to make it a blessing month. We ask Allah to remove any difficulty that some of us might have. So, um, as I described before in my last two videos, the objective for my videos is really to share with you a bird's view, a high-level view of an ayah within each juz. So we're going to try to cover that throughout the whole Ramadan. It is not meant to be a detailed tafsir, it's more high level view with some uh, wisdom or lesson that we can take away and apply them in our life. Because my goal from this series is really to make Quran as practical as possible because it is a practical book. It is a book that we should take a lesson from it and apply it to our lives so we can be better Muslim now and after Ramadan. Before I dive into our ayah of tonight, I want to emphasize that the blessings of Surah Baqarah. I've shared with you two blessings, two hadiths in the last two videos. And I also want to highlight that, that Surah Baqarah also has Ayat Kursi, which is one of the most blessing ayah that Rasulullah asks us to recite after Salat, his Salat, and also before you go to sleep. And it's a protection ayah that we need not to overlook. Tonight we're going to talk about the last two ayah of Surah Al-Baqarah, the last two ayah, which are two ayah 285 and 286. And subhanAllah, these two ayahs are the only two ayahs that were given to Rasulullah from, from the bottom of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the night, the, the, the journey night that he took to Isra. This is where he was given this, these two ayahs. So it gives you the magnitude and, 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 and how important these two ayahs are how blessing they are. So in order to explain to you, to express or to even illustrate how important they are, I'm going to give you the hadith from Bukhari and Muslim. Hadith and Abi Mas'ud al-Badri and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal man qara bil ayatayni min akhir surat al-Baqarah fi laylatin wa fi laylatin kafatah with the hadith muttafaq alayhi fi Bukhari and Muslim. Abu uh, just rough translation in English. Abu Mas'ud al-Badri, may Allah be pleased with him. He said, I heard the Prophet ﷺ saying, he who recited the two ayat at the end of Surah Al-Baqarah and night, they will suffice him. Suffice him, that means he's been covered. He's got, they've got their back. These two ayat, he doesn't have to worry about anything. So that's pretty much the blessing of the last two ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah. So now let's dive into ayah, our topic tonight, which is ayah 286. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala قال بعد عود بالله من الشيطان الرجيم لا يكلف الله ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين In a rough translation Allah does not burden any soul beyond its capacity To its credit is what it's earned and against, and against it is what it commits Our Lord do not condemns us if we forget or make a mistake. Our Lord does not burden us as our Lord do not burden us as you have burdened those before us. Our Lord do not burden us with more than what we have strength to bear and pardon us and forgive us and have a mercy on us. You are our Lord and Master so help us against disbelieving people. That's nutshell of the, the translation of the, the ayah to 86. So I described in the last two videos the main theme or one of the main themes of Surah uh, Al-Baqarah 
one of them is taking charge of the deen, charge in, uh, taking charge of the message. And the message is, 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 is Islam. And how we are the chosen ummah to carry this message to the rest of the world. So this ayah 286, the question is, what is this 286 has to do, how is it connected to the main theme of the surah? Well, if you look at surah 286, as I just recited for you, it has a lot of du'as, a lot of du'a like do not burden us, pardon us, forgive us, have a mercy on us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, make a du'a because I gave you a mission, I gave you uh, an important uh, message to carry on. And so subhanAllah, and this is something a lesson for all of us, when you're about to embark on an important project or task or anything, whether it's da'wah, whether it's fundraising, whether anything that to say bilillah, you need to make a dua to ask Allah to make it easy on you. So I'm going to share with you some of the some few wisdoms from the la, this la, this ayah, ayah 286. The first one, nafsan illa wusaha. Allah says He won't burden any person except of that person's capacity. So any trial, any test, even a gift, even nama that Allah subhanahu wa taala has catered to a person. That's always, that's always based on the capacity of that person. So keep that in mind. So sometimes what it seems to be difficult and a burden for us, like doing uh, siyam, fasting, or qiyam uh, al-layl, or uh, getting up al-fajr, actually those commands from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are within our capacity. So keep that in mind that Allah does not put us, does not burden us. Whatever he is command us to do and stay away from are within our capacity. And so um, the other thing is when it comes to exceptions, there are only a few exceptions. Usually if there is a life or death, i.e. someone is in desert in, 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 in super heat weather, I don't know when 80, whatever, but he's about to die from a thirst. He doesn't have any liquid to drink to save his life. In that case, ulama is allowed him, if there's alcohol, and only alcohol that exists at that point, he's allowed to drink it. So he's allowed to have haram to save the life because the nafs has high value than committing that sin. But that's daruriyat. That's daruriyat. So there is a lot of rules in fiqh where exception are made, but it's life or death. And I'm not going to go into derail the topic about other, but generally anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to do, uh, there are no exceptions. There are some exceptions with, let's say, mashaqa or difficulty, but those are topics we, we're not going to discuss today. The point is, the said there's no jihad for nas, la jihad for nas. This is a qaida fiqh here. That means whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has is in Quran, Sunnah, and agreed by Ijma, by Ulama. There is no wiggle room. Whether it's a riba, it's haram, whether it's zina, it's haram, whether it's uh, performing salat, zakat, there is no, no wiggle room in that. And, and if those have been given to us because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows we have the capacity to do that. Uh, the second part that I want to share with you is uh, I looked at the Zamakhshari. Allah, he was one of the great mufassirin, but he focused a lot on the balagha and, and the language. So he, he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose the word aktasaba with kasaba. Laha ma kasabat wa laha ma ktasabat. If you notice, ktasabat has extra letter than kasabat. In Arabic, sometimes when a word is being added, a little extra letter has been added, it usually signifies a shidda, a difficulty in performing that act with that, that, that word or that verb in this case. So kasabat means something she would, the person will earn by doing a good deed. Ktasabat, that means anything that was done like a bad deed, it will go, it will go against him or her. But Zamakhsar, what he's saying in his book, Kashaf, he say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to use the word ktasaba because linguistically, the word kasaba means difficulty in performing something, where kasaba is less less difficult. In other words, to summarize all this technicality, Zamakhsari is saying 
كسبت that means whatever when it comes to good deed it should be easier to do when it comes to doing haram it should be difficult and comfortable when, when if someone is a really good mu'min with high iman so in other words doing a good deed siyam, salat, anything especially like what we are going through right now Ramadan it should feel easy and we are inshallah and I hope inshallah that this continue after Ramadan and the same thing when it comes to committing haram whether it's looking at something haram whether doing anything that is mil kabair major sin or minor sin it should feel uncomfortable now the last thing I want to share with you is just take away what are the lessons that we're going to take away and apply it to our life the first thing Islam is being designed for all of us and we have the capacity to follow what's been subscribed in Quran Sunnah on the other hand anything that is haram we should feel uncomfortable in doing it number, th number two take advantage of Ayat Kursi and recite it after it's Salat and before you go to sleep number three take advantage of the last two ayats of Surah Al-Baqarah because they will suffice you as Prophet Salim says and recite them in night before you go to sleep make a dua to Allah so he, so he's on it, so he makes it easier subhanahu wa ta'ala in obeying him and also he make it difficult uh, on you to, or, or it makes you feel difficult to or disobey him so when it comes to anything ibadat or any project or any task dua should come first because Allah will make it easier and will remove any difficulty that you might feel this is all I have uh, we ask Allah to to uh, give us the nur of Quran to give us the ability to understand Quran to apply it to our life Subhanakum wa bihamdik, shadu la ilaha illa anta astaghfirukum wa nasubulik, jazakum la khair, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.